It's my great pleasure to introduce your speaker today, Dr. Gemma Pons. Dr. Pons is head of micro, the microsurgery unit at the Hospital San Paolo in Barcelona. Being one of the important faculties of the International Master in Reconstructive Microsurgery, she performs educational courses in more than 20 different countries. Together with Professor Macias, she is known for the most recent microsurgical techniques in breast reconstruction and surgery on lymphedema. Dr. Pons, I'm now going to hand over to you. Yeah, hello, good morning to everybody. So, um, so it's like that. It's a pleasure to me to be here and to share with all of you our experience in a, a fluorescence visualization. Uh, we have a uh, long experience both in lymphedema and uh, flap perfusion. And, uh, and so I would like to start just uh, with the introduction, just saying that in flap reconstruction uh, of complex uh, def defects, the perfusion of the flap is critical to the success of the, of the reconstruction. And you have to, to know that over the last decade, microsurgeons have used a greater variety of more complex flaps, and, uh, and that might have a, uh, that might make uh, the surgeons just to perform safe surgery, and especially in, in the complex cases like this that I am showing, when if the, the flap is not well vascularized, can even uh, compromise the life of the patient. And this is especially true in perforated base flap, where it can be difficult to assess the, the adequacy of the perfusion in the OR, especially if we just do clinically. The, the beauty of perforated flap is uh, especially because they preserve the, uh, the functional anatomy of our body. In just with that tissue, we have a, a wide variety of uh, types of reconstruction. But it's true that the key point in this surgery has been especially for a long time that we, what we have uh, uh, considered two, two, two important points. It has been a good preparatory planning to know which is the dominant perforator that is going to nourish our flap and also a good understanding of the, of the supply of that tissue and of course a good surgical technique. And for that we were the, the pioneers in introducing the uh, angiocity for uh, uh, studying and planning preparatively these flaps. With the angio CT, we have like uh, exactly, immediate preparatively, we know what we are going to find during the surgery. Those images, like here, that we can see a very beautiful photo mark with the pink arrow. Uh, we have like the GPS where uh, we are going to find our dominant perforator, what, what's going to be the caliber, the, the intramuscular course, the intraflap branching, and all the uh, connections with, between all systems. You have just to assess the sagittal and the axial images. And at the end, we have just preoperatively with, with the CT, the roadmap of our surgery, what we are going to find out there. And we just immediately, the day of the surgery, we can transfer to our patient in performance. And And by this way, we can perform a safe surgery. Here we have another example where we can see the perforator going from the lumbar area. And by this way, we can perform bilateral safe surgery with a, with a very uh, quite a safe uh, reconstruction. But it's true that the, although the CTI and geography provides information, especially about anatomical aspects and permit us to identify the dominant perforator. It's true.
Dr. Pons, are you there? We appear to have experienced a technical issue with Dr. Pons's line there. We'll do our best to get her back as soon as possible. Please do bear with us. Please do bear with us while we attempt to get Dr. Pons back online. Um, Julia, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. You're back online. We appeared to lose your internet connection for a moment there. Please do go ahead. Okay, so what I was just saying that although uh, CT and geography is a standard a tool that we nowadays we use to, to plan our flaps appropriately, it's, to, it's true that uh, it has a drawback that, this, that it lacks of the physiologic information that we need interoperatively to know exactly what is the uh, area, tissular area there, that our perforato is going to nourish. So, as uh, there is a high variability in the vascular territory and uh, the fact also that the clinical evaluation of our flaps, it has a very low specificity. If we only base uh, our flaps uh, in, a, in a clinical evaluation, we have a high risk of partial necrosis. This is, uh, this is said that the rate of severe flap necrosis uh, based only in clinical assessment can be up to 18.9%, although if, uh, and if we just use ICG and geography to our assessment, this flap necrosis can uh, decrease until 4.9%. That is a significant decrease in the rate of severe flap necrosis, and that is very important for our, par, uh, for our flap reconstruction. These are pictures that uh, of our flaps that we used to have in the past. When we know we, it was a good, perfor the good perforator, we just perform uh, the, the procedure as safe as we perform nowadays, but at the end, we end up with a, a severe fat necrosis just uh, compromising our reconstruction, reconstruction procedures. Because of that, it's very important to be able to determine the degree of tissular perfusion in order to have to, to uh, perform a right clinical decision making. And for that, the near infrared angiography is very important because uh, allows a reliable and real time assessment of all our uh, tissue in order to avoid potential uh, necrotic areas uh, and also avoid. Uh, further complications. Uh, the technique when we use angiography, uh, you, you, we use the fluorescent dye, the ICG, uh, that we dissolve and inject, uh, as a matter of fact, the anesthetist inject intravenously. The ICG is a soluble dye that is eliminated by the liver and excreted by, by in bile. And, um, uh, it's it's, it's a, a safe a safe uh, contrast and uh, there is a low risk of allergies if it's used properly and uh, it has high sensi sensitivity up to more than 90 percent and accuracy also almost 100 percent just predicting the tissue transfer survival and the dose that uh, we safely had to use is not to, to use more than uh, one milligram, milligram as I as milligram uh, per per kilo, and we can repeat that doses as a total dosage of, of no more than ten milligrams. And is it true that very uh, very uh, few cases of allergy have been uh, described if it's used properly? This uh, this ICG one is inject, injected emits fluorescent light. And when this is excited by the near infrared light source of the camera, 
And uh, then this uh, fluorescence is uh, just shown by the ICG flow camera and displayed on a monitor. This is just, I'm trying just to show a very, uh, uh, this nice video where we can see when we inject the, the ICG, when this ICG is just coming through the tissue that is well, very uh, well profused and showing all the vascularization of uh, the tissue. And uh, um, okay, next one. Sorry, it's a uh, it's very easy to use. We use normally when we uh, we use to assess our the lymphedema patients. We use in the outpatient clinic. It's portable, it's efficient. We don't need uh, any uh, any difficult training. It's compact and easy to use. And this is just. Uh, to show it's very important that this is not a it's a lymphography, but this is just to show how easy it is to use. And just to finish talking now because there is a, a, a lot of. Uh, not thermal. Apologies once again. We do appear to be having internet issues for Dr. Pons. Um, she is remote at the moment, so please do bear with us and we will get her back online. Please do bear with us. Dr. Pons, are you back online with us now? Please do bear with us. I do apologise for this interruption. Now? Dr. Can you hear me? now, can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Can Pons. Can you hear me? I, yes, I can. Please do can go ahead. Can you hear ahead. me now? Please yes. go ahead, Dr. Pons. Okay, so uh, I go. Uh, so uh, as I said ICG angiography, it has high sensitivity, more than 90%, and high accuracy to predicting the tissue transfer survival. If there is insufficient, insufficient arterial perfusion, show it in the angiography. That means that there is a dark spot in our tissue. The probability of necrosis is really very high. So I'm going just to, to show some cases that we operated last week in a, the International Preventive Course. Uh, in That's 
Dr. Pons, I'm sorry, we have lost your internet connection again. Okay. Please do bear with us. What we're going to try to do is to get uh, Dr. Pons on a telephone line. So please do bear with us. Yeah. Now, now, now you hear me. Can you hear we, me? We do, Dr. Pond. Yes, please yes. do go ahead. Okay. Apologies okay. that your Sorry. internet is not good today. Yeah. So uh, this is a case that we operated uh, last week in Colombia with the experts. It was a case where it was very important to know what was the perfusion of the abdominal tissue because uh, that patient had had a previous abdominal liposuction. So we could not be saying that that uh, tissue was going to be very uh, well vascularized by the perforators. So this is the case that the mastectomy, unfortunately, we could not perform. It was performed by the uh, oncological surgeon. Uh, so that's important because later you will see there was some uh, problem, uh, uh, tissular problems on the mastectomy. We could assess the vascular pedicle assessment of our flaps that were uh, all very well nourished and also here in um, this video we can see the white spot it belongs as you can see in the picture to our flap that is buried and all that dark tissue belongs to the mastectomy flap that was poorly but sclerized so that's important to see here our flap that is white uh, fluorescent well nourished and the tissue around the tissue of the mastectomy was just poorly vascularized. And the contralateral side, exactly the same. The flap had good fluorescence, and the mastectomy flap, that in that case had radiotherapy, has poor vascularization. And this is the case after the surgery. This is another case that was operated by Professor Blondel and Professor Marcia. It was a patient who uh, was uh, asking for a breast reconstruction and uh, the treatment of her lymphedema. And uh, we just uh, perform a DF with lymph node transfer uh, to the left arm. She had a, a mild lymphedema, grade two. So it was enough with a lymph node transfer. Here we can see our flap. Here the area that you will see that we are going to discard because it's not well uh, nourished. Here uh, in the video, you will be able. We start just looking at the abdomen, and once the abdomen has a good vascularization, we move. We move to the uh, abdominal tissue. This is already the flap that uh, in the right side has very nice vascularization. Here there is the umbilicus, and in the left side you can see that is the area that is not good vascularized. This is the area of the lymph nodes, uh, lymph nodes flaps that is starting to get vascularization and uh, later you will see here the right side of our flap and uh, now we will start with our pen just to mark the area that we are going to discard because it has no fluorescence it's a, a dark area that has not got uh, uh, blood has not got uh, ICG as you can see here and this is the area that we are going to discard in order to perform a safe surgery. Here is just the assessment interoperative our, of our lymph nodes once they have been transferred in the, into the axillary area. We can see that they have vascularization. We always perform anastomosis at that level. And this is just the immediate postoperative course. And this is the third case of a, 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 just an extrusion of an implant on, on the left uh, breast. And uh, this lady uh, had uh, just not re much remaining tissue. So we just uh, perform an, aut an autologous lateral construction with the scap flap. Here we can see the flap. And uh, here we just was immediate uh, in the operating room. And here, uh, the, the, here is our, the, the video 
that I think I'm not going to be able to see because the PowerPoint, I will try just to move here and to see if it's working. Sorry. Here, here, we can see that all our flap is very well vascularized, uh, unless this peripheral area that you can see here, that is darker, and the rest is well nourished. So we also, we will remove that area because we know if we leave that, that area, the, the, the fat necrosis risk is really uh, very high. So this is the final result. So just uh, some important concepts to perform same safe reconstruction with flaps. Uh, we know that NGCT scan allows us to select the anatomical territory and just to know what is the dominant perforator for our flap. But ICG and geography permits us to select the hemodynamic uh, tissue that we are going to transfer. And by this way, we can uh, optimize our flap design, we can tailor our flap, improve our outcomes and uh, reduce seriously uh, the risk of complications, especially the fat necrosis, the flap necrosis, and also to know if interpretably there is the vasospasm of our pedicle and difficulty uh, to nourish that tissue. So just yes, if in the past we believe that angiocity was uh, the, the main important tool to perform safe reconstruction with flaps, we nowadays believe that after uh, just indicate the right surgical techniques for our patients, uh, it's very important to perform a safe uh, surgery, to, to just to have a preoperative assessment with an CT, an optimal surgical technique, and an intraoperative assessment uh, with ICG and geography. And by this way, we just we can perform uh, a complex uh, reconstruction with high reliability. So you are all welcome to Barcelona. Uh, we will uh, just uh, celebrate next March uh, 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 meeting, the, our Barcelona Breast meeting, and com uh, combined with uh, um, another oncological meeting. And uh, you are all, all, all welcome uh, there just uh, to know more about these techniques and uh, uh, just to have all update about breast reconstruction. Thank you very much. So now just uh, I, I am open for any question you can have. Thank you very much. And just uh, uh, just uh, sorry for all the inconvenience about the Audi. Thank you very much, Dr. Pons. And we are now going to begin answering the questions that have been submitted during today's presentation. So as a reminder, if you do have any questions for Dr. Pons, then simply type your question into the questions pane on your attendee control panel. And we'll go straight to our first question here, Dr. Pons. Um, how can you see if a flap is perfused enough or not based on the fluorescence image only? Um, we, we normally, um, we use nowadays ICG and, uh, and geography in all our flaps, in all our flaps, so that we clinically also assess uh, and we compare the information with the ICG and geography. But the latest decision is uh, taken uh, based on the ICG and geography. If the clinically we have more opti optimistic signs, we don't trust on them. If the ICG and geography shows not a uh, good fluorescent, just bright and quite uh, uh, whitish, we, we really believe that it's not well vascularized and we are going to discharge, uh, discard the, that area of our flap. Thank you very much, Dr. Pons. And in the answer to that, actually, you've covered a little bit of our next question, because the next question is, how often do you use ICG, <clears throat> excuse me, ICG technology in your flap um, reconstruction procedures? Because um, they believe that most of the cases, the clinical evaluation is reliable. 
Uh, we use in all our flaps. We use in the, the mastectomy procedures because we perform all our mastectomies, so it's mandatory also, especially when uh, you are going to reconstruct with implants, because if the, if the mastectomy is not safe, your reconstruction is going to be failure. And in all flaps, head and neck, uh, low limb, uh, breast, all kind of flaps. It's mandatory. We have uh, the device uh, in the operating room and uh, just we use very easily. Our anesthesiology, they know how very well how to use the dose and, uh, and we just use as many times we need. So sometimes we need, we, we use the angiography before uh, isolating the flap. We use after anastomosing the flap, and also we, if we just have any dope, we repeat in case uh, we we just uh, could could improve our knowledge about the 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 tissue the tissue vascularization. But it's true that that the the the, the rate of fat necrosis that we have nowadays is really really very 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 limited. Thank you very much. And we've got another, um, well, firstly, a comment saying thank you so much for the inspiring lecture. Um, and then moving on to say, you said that you also used ICG to evaluate the um, pedicle spasm. Um, how many times do you actually um, use the fluorescence during one um, free flap operation? Normally, as a standard, we use twice. Once we have just uh, raise the, the flap, but is still in the uh, donor site. Okay, so just to see from the donor site how it's well as where is it. And uh, in the, the second time that we use is once we anastomos to the recipient area, because sometimes in the recipient area, the flow of the recipient vessels can be different from the donor area. So just to be sure that the, the vascularization of the flap is going to be at least the same that in the uh, donor area. That is very important also because uh, sometimes there, there can be any problem of vasospasm or any uh, thrombo during anastomosis that can just compromise uh, that tissue. So at least twice. And in case we get into trouble, we repeat as 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 many times as we need. As I said, uh, we have not had any case of allergy, and if it's used with the proper dose, uh, the, 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 there is really no complications at all with ICT. Also, sometimes, if, if, uh, because our flaps are just, um, and the, the follow-up is done by the, by the residents, and uh, sometimes also if they ha have uh, doubts about the vascularization, also in the, the room of the patient or in the ICU, they just inject the, the ICG and they check in the room how is the, the, the tissue vascularization. So it's, we, we, we usually very, very often and, in, in, and we believe that it's a, a very helpful tool nowadays for just perform safe surgery. Thank you very much. And I think that um, also answers maybe some of our next question. Um, the question is, is fluorescence imaging used both before the transplant of the flap and also after grafting the flap? And, and if so, what is the difference in the information that you will look for? Um, the difference is that in the recipient area, you have the, the, the real physiologic vascularization of that flap because it's the constant uh, flow that the flap receives. And once we transfer to the uh, recipient area, sometimes the vessels can be damaged because they can have cryotherapy or in cases of trauma, they can have fibrotic, fibrotic tissue. So sometimes the recipient vessels are less reliable than in the donor area. Because of that, we always want to perform the anastomosis. We, can, we, we want to check that the vascularization is exactly the same than in the, in the recipient area. 
very important. And also because when you have, once you have performed the anastomosis, it's very important just to tailor the flap and to discard the areas that are not very, that, that they are not uh, well uh, profuse. Because um, if you leave that tissue at that moment, it's going to have fat necros necrosis for sure. So that is the moment after the anastomosis, we really tailor and design our flap. Is, is it okay? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. You. Um, with this new technology, um, is it also used for post-operative evaluation? So would you use the ICG again for the post-operative evaluation? Yeah, of course. Of course, that uh, for the follow-up, it's uh, very important as well. We don't use in a standard way as we use intraoperatively, but uh, we especially use in in cases where uh, the residents have no are not sure if the flap uh, are alive, and also in barrier flap in barrier flaps that uh, they are completely under the skin and it, uh, they can know if the vascularization of the flap is a, is a, a good one. Always if the skin that is covering that flap is no thicker than two centimeters. So especially sometimes in head and neck that they are covered by, by very thin uh, tissue that the uh, barrier flap can be just uh, check the vascularization with the uh, angiography. So we, we use we use uh, just in, in cases that we have doubts or we have we get into trouble or we have just revisions of the flap. We just uh, are going on using in the postoperative follow up in the room of the patient or in the ICU. So it's very useful as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Pons. Um, can you use ICG to evaluate the venous congestion of the flap? Yeah, it's an, an it's an indirect sign that, that we can we can see. In, normally, it's a, the, the 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 perfusion when the the flap is very well perfused, you can see a high sign of fluorescence. The tissue is almost white, so that means that it's a a, a good input of uh, uh, oxygen oxygen blood into the flap. When there is a venous congestion, what happens is that the, the, the color of the tissue is uh, slightly darker. It's not completely dark, but it's not completely white and fluorescent. It's slightly darker. And then you can see the veins with staining fluorescence sometimes in. That means that the fluorescence is not moving and it's staining mainly in the veins and that it's a sign of a, a venous congestion. So it means that something wrong is happening in the flap. So that is also useful to, to for all kinds of, of problems into the flap, both arterial or vein problems. That is uh, important to know. And um, so it, it's, it's, it's quite easy to know what are the different patterns of the ICG and geography. And with experience, you can uh, really see very well uh, when is it, the flap is well perfused or not. Also, when we inject the ICG, we don't focus the camera directly into the flap. We just uh, first focus the, the, the camera, as, as I showed in a previous video, in a, a normal tissue. For example, if we perform a DF flap, we focus the camera in the uh, uh, abdominal flap over our DF flap, just to see the normal vascularization of the body. And once that tissue is uh, very well perfused and the angiography just reach all that area, we move the camera to our flap. Just this, just to know what is the standard of the vascularization of our patient. And from there, from that area, just. Uh, to compare uh, with our flap. So the, these are just some tricks. Thank you very much. And moving to the final question that we have in so far today. Um, the question is, have you tried a Novodak, a spy system? 
And how does the handheld system you showed on your slide compare to a, compare to a big system like SPY? And secondly, what are the challenges for you using the existing fluorescent imaging systems? Um, yeah, I have I have used SPY three four times, and uh, for me, it's it's not what we would uh, call friendly device. It's for me, it's big device, and um, it's maybe too sophisticated. And I don't think you need such a sophisticated device just to get the right information. So I think that I give value to a simple and a portable and quite friendly device. And I think it's, that is important. For me, it's, it's too, too, too sophisticated. You don't need such a sophisticated device for me, in my opinion. Um, to tell you that the, the ICG flow, what I find really the advantage of this device it's really that it, it's portable. It's really very, very, very uh, easy to use. As a matter of fact, nobody taught me how to use. Uh, as a matter of fact, when Dr. Masia uh, brought uh, here at the department, he said, OK, start using. And, and just searching on that, I learned on my own. So it's really very, very, very easy. It's very, um, you can just uh, know very easy how it works. And it's portable. You can just bring uh, to the room station, or if you just get, want to get a better image, as I show in my video, you, you, you just can connect with a bigger screen and you have a, a, a nice images. Mm, the challenging of using the ICG and geography, I don't think it's challenging if, uh, if the device is not too complex also. Uh, the, the ICG flow, uh, also the advantage that it has is that it's very easy just to record images uh, and we just with this uh, uh, pen drive you get very easily. Uh, it's, it's easy to, to open, you just open and it's done. It's not that you don't have to go to a complex program. So for me these are the advantages. And the challenging, it's true that the only thing that uh, ICG and geography needs some knowledge or training is how uh, when you do the angiography or also lympho lympho lymphography in lymphedema is that you have to manage with the light intensity. So you have to almost close all the light or just uh, sometimes to put an eye direct light in order to, to, um, to obtain the right images. And also the distance that uh, you use the, the the camera that you focus into the skin has to be at least uh, 18, 10, 20 centimeters. And if you don't properly, you don't get the images uh, focused enough. That happens maybe in in the scab video, video that I showed that probably the the surgeon was not used with this device and probably did not just use at the right uh, distance from the skin. But this is everything very easy to use and very friendly. Uh, all the, the this device is really very friendly and and really the the benefits that can you obtain uh, just overcome a lot uh, the 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 possible challenge that uh, it offers. Thank you. And one final question has come in, um, Dr. Pons. Um, is the IC um, utility um, in the preoperative evaluation of the perforator? Does that question make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is something that nowadays we also are studying. And um, it's through that technology advances very fast, and uh, many, many tools or devices are just being developed in order just to know what is the area where you best perfuse and also with the perforators. And with the ICG and geography, it can be just showed which is the right perforator, but especially if the thickness of the tissue is less than two centimeters, because we know that that the, 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 it does not 
get or in, take information more deeper than the two centimeters. But if the tissue is 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 uh, just thin, like a small flap, like a skip flap, or sometimes did a flap, you can get the right information and to see exactly the the right spot from where the 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 perforator comes and is going just to nourish the our tissue. And by this way, you can just tailor. The, the the design of our flap so this is something that now we are working on and there are several groups working on that because uh, maybe in some special cases also can uh, substitute uh, some aspects of angiocity not all of them but maybe some aspects and i also believe that all this technology maybe in the future will be integrated there will be just uh, the microscope with uh, ICG and with maybe with the scans. So all these devices will be integrated, just making everything uh, more easy and more, more comfortable and more, more friendly in order to work. So that's my opinion. Thank you very much. And it just leaves me to thank you, Dr. Pons, for your wonderful presentation and to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Once you leave the webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. It's just a couple of really quick questions, and we would appreciate it if you could keep your browser window open and complete that and provide your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours, which will include a link to view a recording of today's webinar. On behalf of Diagnostic Green, the International Society of Fluorescent Guided Surgery, and our presenter, thank you so much for joining us and please do enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.